The Lord our God said to his prophet Isaiah, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Truly our God is doing a new thing with First Presbyterian Church. For nearly 200 years, this church has served Christ from here in the heart of Tuscaloosa. Look around us and you will see the heritage, the foundation our church is built upon. But as in the days of Isaiah, God beckons us to look to our future. God is doing a new thing. In the next 12 months, our church will begin its search for a new pastor. For 25 years, my family and I have made this church our home. I'm gratified to see the babies I baptized decades ago take their places in active membership and leadership roles in our church. I'm in a unique position to talk about the excitement I feel for the future of First Presbyterian. I have seen God's work among us and I hear God's call. We are nearly 200 years old, but we've only just begun the work our God has in store for us. We've just completed a three-year self-study that helps us understand our congregation and form our vision for the future. A capital campaign task force took the results of this study, formulated a plan that has been reviewed and approved by session. That plan includes elements to enhance our worship experience, maintain and enhance our church campus as a base for worship and service, and a response to the call to reach beyond our walls to serve others. When you walk in this sanctuary, it's hard to ignore the power of the Holy Spirit that fills this place, but nothing gives us the sense of God's presence and majesty more immediately than the sounds of the Kasavant organ. When we make music, when we sing hymns, when we sing solos, when the choir sings, we're giving voice to our beliefs and to what's in our hearts. Music provides us a wonderful opportunity to gather together every week and glorify God in a way that the spoken word by itself can't accomplish. Music is just what speaks to me. It's, it is what can, will bring tears to my eyes, beautiful music. And I can sing beautiful music and I feel close to God. This organ was designed mainly to play music of 18th century Germany, which is wonderful if all you're playing is Johann Sebastian Bach. Unfortunately, that organ was not exactly what we would choose to meet the needs of a church service. The second problem is that an organ this age and with this design has some problems with pipes that are literally falling over. <laughs> also some pipes that won't stay in tune. The organ itself is in desperate need of some restoration. That organ's pretty much on its last legs. Nobody Nobody knows that because of the talent that Jeff has in his skill level, that he can take an organ that is dying and make it sound fabulous. Some of the pipes we notice because of the content of tin are starting to lean. Now you know as well as I do that when something starts leaning, it's not going to stop until it eventually hits the floor. Some pipes that are supposed to be round are now more or less oblong or oval. Only one-fourth of this organ has any control of volume. As you know, there are many times when this organ is simply too loud. But there are so many times when what we need is a quiet, beautiful, almost orchestral sound which is something that this organ simply does not have. In our search in visiting organs, in hearing some really fine organs that sound absolutely nothing like what we have, I realized what I missed. I never have heard an organ, a really good organ. And when you hear a really, really quality organ, it is unbelievable. It would enhance what we are able to do because the choir cannot sing lots of different types of music because our organ cannot play it. 
I know it's a lot of money. $1.7 million can do so many great things. But the key here is that this is doing a great thing. It's allowing us to glorify God on a weekly basis and to grow in our faith and our worship together. I'm depending on you to help us make this dream into a reality. Not for me, but for the life of this church. The emotional moments that you will experience when you hear the sound of this thrilling new organ is something that is almost unbelievable and very hard to describe. I ask that you would look at this as an adventure with God as we seek to enhance our worship, our music ministry, and our outreach into the community and into the world. The worship experience many of us enjoy every week at this church brings us together and draws us all closer to our Lord. But this worship experience extends beyond our walls. Every week, many who cannot join us at this place of worship are able to join us spiritually through our television ministry. Many right here in Tuscaloosa view our television services but we also hear reports from all around the country, indeed from around the world, of members and friends who depend upon our television ministry to stay close to the church they love. But the television ministry depends quite literally upon the grace of God as week to week we call upon aging, almost antique equipment to broadcast our service just one more time. This capital campaign will help replace the ancient equipment you see behind me. To tell you the truth, at any given moment on a Sunday morning, we are at risk of losing our television broadcast, of it going completely dark. So there really isn't a choice as to whether we do this. As a part of our television broadcast uh, improvement, we will be replacing the lighting in the sanctuary to provide more natural light, throughout our television broadcast, and we will also be replacing our sound system in the sanctuary. In addition, our capital campaign will allow us to improve our social media presence. It will position us to be able to live stream our television broadcast and reach a wider audience. Um, it will also allow us to substantially improve our website and our membership management database. The beautiful campus where we worship is a testimony to the love, foresight, and sacrifice of generations before us. But with the joy of worshiping and learning here comes the responsibility to maintain this structure and these grounds. This is no small task and no small expense. A portion of our capital campaign effort will be dedicated to maintenance of the capital investment we've already made on this city block. In 2011, our church made a commitment to our future and to our faith in God's call. In about a year, we'll be required to close on the purchase of the YMCA property across Bryant Drive from the church. This purchase will give the church the property on the four corners of Lurleen Wallace northbound and Bryant Drive. The YMCA property across the street is vital for the church's longevity and its continued witness for Christ from the heart of Tuscaloosa. Imagine, if we had not had the foresight to buy the property across Lurleen Wallace, we would not have been able to do the expansion on this block because there would not have been enough parking space. The city would not have allowed it. We would have been even more cramped uh, than we are at this point in time. As far as the church, I think it has a unique opportunity or did have a unique opportunity in purchasing the Y property. Uh, it's hard to find property uh, anywhere you are uh, that you can continue to grow your ministry or grow your facilities or grow your building in close proximity where you can use some of the same staff. Uh, you can literally walk back and forth. And so when this uh, opportunity came up, I was excited for the YMCA, but I was more excited about the church. And I knew we had a place to go and grow in the future.
We have observed what happened across Greensboro when probably at one time we had an opportunity to purchase that land. And don't we wish we had? At the very worst, as we have discussed before, there are probably a lot of interest in this property by uh, commercial enterprises. It's uh, in the heart of downtown Tuscaloosa. I suspect if we wanted to, we could sell it at a nice profit. And if worse came to worse, we could always do that. But in the meantime, uh, there are possibilities that I'm sure we haven't thought of. There are dreams we could dream about the future of this church and especially its missions and service to the community. You know, we don't just serve our congregation here in worship service, but we have a larger responsibility than that, and it involves the community, whether it's caring days or the counseling center or a need that's out there that we haven't uh, attended to yet. Look what we did on this block. It was hard to imagine that our facility could look the way it looks, all right? We're worried about the looks across the street. We think eventually there's going to be a box there. Well, I think we can trust that we'll do a good job with the exterior of the box like we've done here. But more than that is what goes in that box. What, what, um, what will it contain? What ministries, what missions, what excitement? Can we predict what our next project will be that might need space? Well, I can't, but uh, I'm sure there will be opportunities arise. And if we don't have that space, forget it. There's nothing, there's nothing we can do. We're using all of our space now. I'm just glad that we have the leadership at the church that's not looking five years down the line, 10 years down the line. They're looking 10, 20, 30 uh, years down the line. Just like someone did when they built that beautiful sanctuary, I can't help but look up and go, golly, we could have done this a whole different way. And it may have been less expensive, but it sure, sure would not be the place of worship that it is. And so I'm glad somebody had a big imagination 50, 100, 125, 150 years ago. And I'm hoping somebody's gonna look at what we did at that location and said, that group had a big imagination. You know, when I, I think about the why and other developments over time. I'm always reminded of the words of uh, Ernest Williams, who was uh, a pillar of strength in this church, when he would say, well, you know, we enjoy the shade of trees we did not plant. Our forefathers did. Well, I think it's time that perhaps we plant some trees that will serve future generations of this church. And one big tree that we can plant is that YMCA property. The call to missions is a call our church has heard and has answered. From Madagascar to Marion County, from Kenya to Missouri, from Washington, D.C. to Alberta City, we have responded to the call. First Presbyterian has a heart for mission, I believe. Um, and it's shown by the number of our members that are involved in mission. For example, in 2013, we had over 140 of our church members involved in various mission projects through serving on mission teams or working on projects here in Tuscaloosa County or Perry County. We involve youth, we involve college, we involve elementary age, high school, middle school. Uh, from a mission standpoint, First Presbyterian has opportunities for all age groups and we've been very fortunate to have the involvement from all age groups in our mission work. The First Presbyterian is a big supporter for the Habitat uh, build projects that we do here in Tuscaloosa and First Presbyterian uh, has teams that go, that, that go out and work on those projects. We've got so many different opportunities and uh, starting with Charlie Durham as, as the head of our church, uh, First Presbyterian has made a real commitment to mission and this commitment has, has uh, cascaded down throughout our church. I want to personally thank the members of First Presbyterian for their participation in the capital campaign and their continued investment in our church here at First Presbyterian and the many great programs that we all enjoy and benefit from. The Global Mission Fund Drive 
for 2014 will be included as a portion of our capital campaign. It is rare for us to have a mission opportunity that promises to touch countless lives decades and even longer into the future. Living River, the Presbyterian retreat under construction between Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, is one of those opportunities. First Presbyterian Church has played a special role in the effort to make Living River a reality. Ellen Potts has given an incredible amount of energy and time to this project. And David McGifford has been the driving force in the design, engineering, and construction of the camp. Uh, my involvement with Living River started about 12 years ago uh, when my so-called agent, Dr. George Miller and friend, appointed me to to Charlie to put me on the committee, and he now takes 10% of the credit of everything that I have done. Uh, this property lies uh, about halfway between Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. It's an hour drive from either direction. Uh, both, you come in from Birmingham, you come through Montevallo, you come in from Tuscaloosa, you come through Woodstock. We have about 400 plus acres over in the Shelby Bibb County area. The, the county line actually goes through the camp. Uh, the property is bordered on the north and the, and the west by the Cahaba River and it makes a big long thumb and numerous miles of river front for canoeing. We have spent millions of dollars at Living River already building the road infrastructure for the camp, putting the water lines in, building a water tank. We've, uh, we've come a long way. Uh, we don't have a camping facility yet, but we're very, very close. We have a plan now that will get us three youth cabins, a staff cabin, a general purpose building for meetings and, and the dining facility, and also a caretaker's facility. There are so many young people today that don't have a place to go and, and be in the woods and be on the rivers and outside the cities. We were all fortunate that we grew up in a time that we had all that, but Living River is, is a place that's at 400 plus acres. It's got the untold potential of areas for future campsites and, and it's, it's just an amazing area. Our capital campaign will provide the resources to touch thousands of lives for many decades. Glorifying God through worship, through our music and television ministries. Welcoming and ministering by being good stewards of what God has given us and stepping out on, in faith to prepare for future ministries. Sharing God's love through missions across the world, across our state, across our country. We are calling on our congregation to provide about $4.1 million to respond to God's call. The fundraising consultants who have helped our church in past successful campaigns have conducted a feasibility study that tells us that this financial goal should be well within our reach. Now, each family will have to listen to God's voice and prayerfully consider how you will participate in God's plan for us. Throughout the last several months, we as a church family have been attempting to ascertain where God is leading us. And throughout that process, a wonderful hymn of the church, Here I Am Lord, has been in my heart and in my head and I hear it almost every day. The words say, Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will keep your people in my heart. My prayer is that all of us in our church family will continue to hear the words of this hymn and be reminded that it isn't just our decision about where we're led, 
but it's God's and we must listen. I remember that night when we came into this place, it was dark as it could be and gradually the lights came on and we saw the glorious splendor of this worship space and the pastor nominating committee led us down. I got to touch this pulpit where so many have proclaimed the gospel. And since that time, it's been blessing after blessing we've experienced together. We have been here at birth and at baptism, around the table and around a casket. We have gone out from this place in the heart of Tuscaloosa into the community and into the world in places we never imagined together. But God has had an amazing plan for us and it continues to unfold. That was the past and in this present moment, we're looking forward to a future that's gonna be even more glorious than we've had in these past 25, in these past 200 years. The Lord has so much in store for us and what's in store for my family and I right now is to sit down and make a, a pledge. We have to decide what the Lord is calling us to do, not what we can do, but what we will do by God's grace. We're going to make that pledge because we know it's a, a pledge to not only the future of this church, but a future of our home. We, this is our home. You have made this our home church, our home community. We love it here and we love you. And we look forward to growing into that future together. And I know that uh, just as we have been blessed in the past, you will be too. So. You consider this pledge, you make it, you give it to God's glory because God who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. I know that. I know it in my heart and you do too. So I leave with you this uh, blessing from the letter to the Ephesians. And now unto him who by the power at work within you is able to do far more abundantly than all you can ask or imagine. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and to all generations. Amen.